Well, it looks like I've got another list of burn down the village in order to save it type stories for you again this week. But before we dive in, I want to make it clear that I am happy that problems like sexual harassment and campus rape are being addressed. But sometimes the proposed solutions tell you more about the paternalistic nature of the society than the existence of the problems themselves. For example, Missouri Republicans Bill Kidd and Nick King are looking for a way to tackle the repeated accusations of sexual harassment of young female interns. With representatives from both parties having been forced into resignation over harassment accusations, it seems at least a little overdue. So I'd love to applaud them for at least recognizing that there's an issue here in need of a solution. But I can't, because they got the wrong problem. See, in the minds of these assholes, the problem isn't 50-year-old men sending dick pics to their 19-year-old interns. It's all those damn lolitas with their short skirts and exposed clavicles. According to King, quote, We need a good, modest, conservative dress code for both males and females. Removing one more distraction will help everyone keep their focus on legislative matters. End quote. Or translated out of dickheadies, If those little sluts weren't coming to work in tassels and doilies, these poor middle-aged men wouldn't be victimized as often. Of course, if there's anywhere you can turn to find some surefire misogyny, it would be Fox News' Outnumbered. And at this point, it seems like Andrea Tantoris is to me as Pat Robertson is to Heath. Hell, I guess I should have a nickname for her by now. So A-Taint and guest host Kennedy Montgomery were discussing a few overtly rapey banners hanging off of a frat house at Old Dominion College. The banners, which had messages like Freshman Daughter Drop Off and Leave Mom Too, were roundly criticized by the college, as well they should be. Freshman girls starting college shouldn't be greeted by I've got a roofie with your name on it type messages. But it shouldn't surprise you to learn that a was quick to come to their defense. After reluctantly agreeing that it's probably best for the school to take an unwavering no-rape stance, she and Montgomery offered up their preferred solutions for keeping their daughter safe, which included sending her to a convent and, of course, quote, keeping her at home in the kitchen, end quote. But of course, nothing will give you perspective on sexism quite like taking a global view. So we'll make a quick stop in Pakistan before we wrap things up. Now this story doesn't actually have a hook or anything, but somebody sent it to me and I figured it was the perfect capstone for this week's segment. It turns out that in Pakistan, they're having trouble staffing the women-only police forces they have to handle women crimes. And believe it or not, the concept of girly cops is actually a step forward in Pakistani culture. Since before this, the only way a woman could report a crime was by convincing a man to talk to the police on her behalf. So there's my silver lining for the week. At least we're allowed to lodge a legal complaint while menstruating in this country. Sorry, positive spin just isn't my thing. So with that, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath. 